we came to NAPC after relocating to the New Albany and Kahana area. Um, we had been there for maybe about six to eight months and decided that we needed to find a home church. Um, we had a number of struggles that we were having at that time, um, and I think we had tried to do everything within our own power, our own being, to kind of work through those and had reached a point of realization that it was outside of us. I, had, uh, I was uh, fighting some criminal charges and life was just insane and we wanted some type of normalcy. Uh, wanted to give our children some type of uh, church home, some type of church upbringing. And so that was originally why we started looking for churches as well. Originally just went to Google and start looking for churches that were close to us. Um, NAPC is at the top of the list and I think there probably were three or four more churches on that list as well. Um, so kind of told the family that Sunday, said, you know, let's try to make it to church. And I just had all this confliction when I first walked in. I honestly believe that I was going to explode when I walked into those <laughs> church doors because my life had been so chaotic and crazy before that time, but uh, to my surprise, that didn't happen. And, uh, <laughs> and then when we walked in, we were greeted by an amazing smile. I think that was the biggest thing. Yeah, Maria was absolutely wonderful. She was a greeter that morning. Mm -hmm. And the moment that she saw us, it was the biggest, most uh, loving smile I had ever seen. And, they greeted us, and I, I understand that now. That is so important for the first thing an individual sees when they're walking through a church door. is an amazing smile with pure love behind it. Uh, yeah, that was moving. That was really the first thing I told her, like, man, everybody is so nice here. I've never been in a place that is so nice. I hadn't. Um, it was a culture shock, uh, but it was amazing. And then after service, um, Pastor Dave actually came and introduced himself to us and to the girls um, and gave us a tour of the church. And again, just made us feel really, really welcome. Um, and it was just really, really great to have that type of engagement from the pastor. I don't think we had ever experienced that before. Mm -hmm. um, so the following week, we knew, you know, we had to work down our list. And so thinking like, should we go to the next church? And it really kind of got to the point where it was like, no, let's go back. Um, was here, you know, Pastor Dave often too speaks in a series, right? Uh, and we really wanted to continue to hear the message that he was speaking on. So we returned the following Sunday and the following Sunday, and then ultimately threw away the list of the other churches. We knew we found our home church. I knew eventually, meeting Pastor Dave, that I was going to have to sit down and talk about what I was currently going through and uh, my past. I grew up in the inner city on the east side. Uh, I had been a criminal since I was six or seven years old, so my uh, criminal record was terrible to say the least. Uh, I was facing, if I took it to trial, minimum of 10 years. So everything up to that point was just like I had a cloud over me. Uh, I remember sitting looking him in his eyes and I told him I, I had criminal charges I was fighting right now and I didn't know what my future held. So that's why we hadn't even talked about marriage. We were just trying to get that situated first and remember him without blinking. He looked over at Chris and he said, does that change how you feel about him? And she said, no. He said, would you marry him right now if he asked you? And she said, yes. Then he looked right back at me and he said, so now what's your excuse? <laughs> And uh, I had never, ever even thought about marriage before that moment. And I remember sitting looking at her, and he was like, oh, I want you to think about some things. Uh, I'm going to give you a week and uh, come back and holler at me. And I remember uh, texting about two days later, and I said, we're going to get married. Mm -hmm. And he was like, thank God, amen. <laughs> so uh, from that moment, uh, first sitting down and talking with Pastor Dave, Jesus has started to work in our lives at that moment started to walk us down that path. That was just so eye-opening for us, um, yes. coming from different backgrounds where you know, I came from a two-parent home. Um, and Alex, his parents had divorced when he was young, but still together we didn't collectively have a vision of what marriage was and what our role was and how we should serve each other through that marriage. I have to say from my own experience um, watching, although I had a two-parent home, um, my mother suffers from a mental illness. And so my dad is an amazing provider, 
um, and has tried very hard to be an amazing husband, um, but definitely it's just challenges when your partner can't reciprocate or um, is not really aware of the challenges they're presenting to the marriage. And so originally marriage was really scary for me. Um, and I think that's why it was even more impactful. The moments we had with Pastor Dave to talk about what was the purpose of marriage and what is our intent, right? Um, as we take this covenant together, it really gave me faith um, because of what I saw, there was a lot of discomfort. Um, and I just not the wife I wanted to be to Alex and not the mother I wanted to be to my kids. It was not to model what I had seen. Um, so it was like we're stepping out on faith, you know, that God's guiding us um, to provide, you know, Him, to provide Him to our kids and have the Him be the focus of our marriage. My background uh, wasn't too much love shown. So the love that we show our kids now and the compassion and everything of that nature is a complete 180 from what I had growing up. And we explain oftentimes the difference in our upbringing and what we experienced um, and the struggle that we have not to replicate that, right? So if you even think about our journey and our, our walk in life has a lot to do with what we saw growing up. Um, you know, Alex kind of, like you said, you veer towards the, the streets because that's what we're surrounded around is people kind of finding their own way and making decisions that weren't great. Um, in the community we grew up in, it was very common that people were single parents that were never married. Um, so there just wasn't this kind of understanding, this love for God, right? And living His purpose for you. It was kind of everyone for themselves, which I think leads to a lot of the, the chaos and the experience that we actually um, had to live, right? And suffer from. And Pastor Dave, I mean, really helped us have some hard conversations, um, right? And really come to the realization of what a covenant marriage is. And I think with that, you know, we were able to continue to persevere, lean on God, um, hold each other up and pray for each other. Um, even after we got married, which ultimately led to the resolve of like the criminal charges that you had against you. And uh, I remember uh, the first thing I did was cry uh, because uh, we had been fighting that case for about three years. It had tormented uh, me for a long time from the moment they first kicked in the door until that moment. Uh, it was relief. Uh, disbelief, uh, gratefulness to God, because I know for sure uh, that is the only thing that uh, made this situation happen. That was such a large or significant trial that we had faced early on and as we are trying to grow in our faith. Um, and I think now I almost have like a, a trial barometer where it's like, you know, we've been through the worst, like this isn't that big of a deal. Um, but really that allows you to reflect and remember what God has brought you through. Christ died on the cross for all of our sins, right? And with that, we had to let go of that shame, that guilt, whatever baggage we were bringing with us because He had already took it off for us. Um, and so with that, knowing that we were coming to the table just like everyone else. And I think one of the most eye-opening things is one of the uh, members meetings we had attended and probably the first one, and the budget was shared and talked about the church actually using 10% to give as well. I was like, oh, wow. Because yeah. right, the first time I remember telling you, like, it's the first time I've been to a church where they've shared this like and everything. explained what was yeah. happening. Um, and I think seeing that really made me feel convicted to make sure I was doing my part to enable the church. Um, but because of the blessings that God had gave us, you know, Alex finding his career um, and really accelerating in his career, you know, just going from personal training to now into management and running the club. He, of course, was on an upward trajectory from a financial standpoint. Um, and it really kind of made me kind of take a step back and look at myself and say, you know, what path am I on? Am I kind of doing my part as well? Um, and I stepped out on faith too, and went into business for myself and the blessings just came in tenfold. Um, and with that, we had to sit down and have a real conversation about what are we really doing with this money? You know, God's blessed us beyond belief, doing things that we thought really tapped our gifts and allowed us each day to touch somebody else's life positively. But the financial reward, what are we doing with that? And so we had a few conversations and we prayed. Um, 
and I think a couple times we wrote out numbers and now it set it to the side, right? I um, wanted to make sure that we are really, we're thinking about how do we really become generous um, beyond our comfort zone before. Mm -hmm. And then I think the last time we had the conversation was right before, uh, Right before Christmas, it was. right? It was right before Christmas, and we had prayed, and we said, "Yep, this is it," right? And we gave, and I remember you saying, "Like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> we had never right been that generous financially <laughs> before," um, and it was a little weirdness, a little mm. awkwardness um, that we just couldn't believe we did it, but we knew that the church was going to do such great things with yes. it. You know, you can see it when you walk through the doors, all the lives that are being impacted, yes. the doors being open and embracing and bringing in people of different diversities, different challenges, different backgrounds. Um, and we want to be able to provide money, right, to do that. And so being able to give financially was a blessing for us, but we know it's going to be such a blessing for all the lives that NAPC touches because of it. When we first came to that church, I know me personally, I was at a crossroads, I was lost. Uh, I felt like I actually had nothing. I uh, didn't have nothing to build from. Um, didn't have a future because I felt like I was going to be in prison. Uh, so from that point to now, I just feel like God has given me everything. Plus, uh, the blessings have been in abundance. Uh, my life is amazing from the moment I open my eyes to the moment I close it. Uh, I'm blessed beyond measure and uh, there is no price on that. So when it came to giving, it was just natural. Give, give everything. Yes, if I was someone who was struggling with being able to um, give and give charitably, right, wholeheartedly, um, I would probably need to sit and consider the reasons I feel that way, right? And I think some of those reasons are, are valid. Um, you know, sometimes you have individuals who are maybe having a hard time making ends meet. Um, sometimes just you don't know how to manage your money to make it possible. Um, but I think the point where it switches from a reason to an excuse is when you don't take any action to figure out why you can't be more charitable. Right, and so with us, we had to get to the point where we really focused in and said, okay, how do we increase our ability to earn, but then also how do we better manage what we have? Um, because we're sure we're spending on things that are more of a luxury, right, and a want than it really is a need, right? Um, people need Christ, right, not an option, right? And so we want to be able to give money to meet that need as that need was met in our lives. Um, so really sitting down and just being disciplined about how you're using your money, how you're managing it to figure out, can you give just $5 more, $10 more, whatever it is, right? To figure out how you can be more charitable because it's gonna impact so many lives. I always love what Pastor Dave says, you know, it's a church of high invitation and high challenge. Um, I think our journey has definitely spoke to that. You know, for the moment we walk through the door with all the welcoming faces, um, was definitely highly invited to walk through the door. And then the challenge, right, to be more Christ-like, to live our purpose and to be accountable um, for our sins, right, and to correct those and truly repent. This was the first time we truly understood the gospel. Um, before NAPC, we looked at um, Christianity in more of like just the structure, like the religious way, you know, like you go to church, there's a few things you do and you just continue to check off that checklist. Um, but after NAPC, we really grew to understand what the gospel was and what it means and how to live. It has been amazing and I'm sure it will continue to be amazing as we're members of NAPC. Before NAPC, I was uh, a criminal. I was selfish. Everything uh, I did had to serve and uh, benefit me in the end. Um, after P NAPC, uh, everything I do once I wake my eyes up is, uh, once God lets me wake up, is uh, help others. Everything is about giving, uh, giving my time, giving my concern, uh, giving my care. That's what life is about now. I went from uh, taking to giving.